Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to a special live episode of the Elisa Childers podcast, where we equip Christians to identify the core beliefs of historic Christianity, discern its counterfeits, and proclaim the gospel with clarity, kindness, and truth. And today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things in the whole world, and that is scripture. We're gonna talk about studying the Bible and this amazing resource of Logos Bible software that I use just about every single day. So we are really excited to bring you this webinar. We're gonna tell you all about uh, how Logos works, all the features it has, and our uh, special representative, Scott Lindsay, who I'm gonna introduce in just a moment, is gonna offer today what is actually double the normal discount that they offer. So you're in for a big discount. So stay with us till the end, because that's when you're gonna find out about that discount that will last for a whole week. So if you're listening to this on audio platforms, this discount will be good for you as well. I also wanna say hi to YouTube and to uh, Facebook. I wanna let you know that if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe and hit the notification bell because you are not gonna to wanna to miss some of the great episodes we have coming up in this new year. Next week, next Sunday, we will be interviewing John Cooper of the band Skillet. He has been uh, really just outspoken on some really important issues lately, and he's just come out with a new book. So uh, we already recorded that episode, and it was really, really good, you guys. I don't want you to miss it. We talked specifically about just the intense pushback he's gotten from just even the title of his book. And then after that, we're going to have Scott Klusendorf, who's going to help equip you to make the case for the pro-life position. So this is going to be all about pro-life apologetics. In the upcoming weeks, we have episodes with Pastor Skip Heitzig, one of my favorite Bible teachers. He is going to come on to talk about misconceptions people have about the Bible, uh, trends that concern him about uh, how people are approaching the Bible. And we also are going to have an episode on the teachings of Bill Gothard and the errors of the Gothard movement with an expert in the Gothard uh, teaching and that, and that movement. So this is going to just be so great. So please subscribe. Make sure you click the bell icon. And if you're listening on audio platforms, definitely subscribe as there, uh, there as well. And then you'll be notified every time a new episode is released. And we are also going to do an episode with uh, Tim Barnett, my co-author. And, and that's what I want to take a moment and tell you about because it is just two weeks until the deconstruction of Christianity, the book, is coming out. And I am so excited about this book. This has been about two years in the making, over 200 footnotes, deep research to help the church understand this phenomenon of deconstruction. Um, the Deconstruction of Christianity, you can pre-order it now. You can go to Amazon, Christian Book, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold, and pre-order it. But you have two weeks to take advantage of the pre-order bonuses that we're offering. So if you order the book, head on over to thedeconstructionofchristianity.com. I know that's long, but it's just the title.com, thedeconstructionofchristianity.com. And then if you scroll down, you can fill out a form, put in your receipt number, and when you do that, you will get an email with a free chapter. And the chapter that we're offering is the chapter called Advice. And honestly, I think that's probably the most important chapter in the whole book. And we wanted you to be able to have access to that early. And so you're gonna get that uh, chapter for free, but you're also going to get 60 days of free access to the audiobook. So for those of you who like to kind of keep those hand in hand, if you're like me, I like to do that. I like to listen to a book, but I also like to have a physical copy that I can uh, refer to. But you'll get 60 days of the audiobook for free just for pre-ordering the book. So again, go to uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Christian Book, wherever you buy your books, and order The Deconstruction of Christianity, what it is, why it's destructive, and how to respond, and then head over to the deconstruction of Christianity.com, fill out the form and get your pre-order bonuses. All right, guys, I am so excited to introduce you to Scott Lindsay, who's going to tell us all about this amazing resource of uh, Logos Bible software. But before we do that, I want to let you know that we are going to take some questions at the end. Now, primarily, we're going to prioritize questions that have to do with Logos Bible software. If you have questions about how it works or what the packages entail or any any questions that don't get answered throughout the webinar that Scott's going to give us right now, feel free to put those into uh, the comment section. But also, I would love to hear from you about what you're doing this year to study the Bible. It's a new year. Lots of people are going to start a plan where they read 
read through the Bible in a year. Others are doing a more deep dive study. What are you doing this year? We'd love to hear from you. Put it in the comments, and we just would love to see what you guys are, uh, how you're approaching your Bible study for this year. All right, without any further ado, Scott, welcome. So glad to have you back. You've been on it with us two or three times, and you always do such an amazing job to show us the software and give us a great discount, but we're actually getting the double, double discount today. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah, I, I told you it was a bit of a mistake that I had yes. to say, hey, I already told Elisa this. They're like, oh, uh, OK, but don't do not do that anywhere else. I'm like, OK, sh we'll just keep it to this audience. So yes, that's right. double the normal discount. That's right. Well, Scott, anything you want to let us know about Logos before we head into the webinar and you kind of show us all the cool bells and whistles and all that good stuff? Yeah, a little bit about us. Um, we've been doing this now for 31 years. Um, most of your colleagues, authors that you probably read, and, and I bet you a lot of the research that went into this uh, new title, which we're actually releasing in Logos format in a couple of weeks, so you could actually go find the deconstruction. There you go. Chris, there you go, can another place. Can they pre-order it? Is there a possibility yes. for them to pre Yes, you so can pre-order pre pre there too. Guys, pre-order it, get Logos pre-order it on Logos and then get your pre-order bonuses. I wish I would have known that before I said all of that. Don't go to Amazon. Don't give it to Amazon. Do yeah, Logos. exactly. Not them. Go to Logos.com. <laughs> but don't listen, don't go to Logos.com right now. You yeah, wait until we're with done us. with it. Right. Uh, but yeah, we've been doing this for 31 years. Uh, we now have over a million users. Uh, we're about 400 employees kind of split between Bellingham, Washington. I live a little north of Bellingham, right on the Canadian border. And we have had a very cold spell the last couple of days. Uh, we were talking about uh, all that I've had to do the last couple of days to keep my animals alive. Uh, but we're, we're warm today at 26. Um, another number I like to put out there is we are, we just hit 200,000. So that's how many books we have in the mm -hmm. Logos format. So whatever your interest is, whether it be apologetics, whether it be Hebrew, Greek, archaeology, I mean, literally just about any type of theological nuance or focus, again, not now, later, go to Logos.com. <laughs> And we have ample. Uh, one of my favorite pastors is Skip Heitzig. We have Skip's sermon archives. So we mm. actually do a lot with him. Uh, and, you know, one of my favorite teachers. And yes, you can buy his books and sermons at Logos. Uh, but before we get into Logos 10, which is what we are showing today. So in 31 years, we've only had 10 major releases of logo so this is the latest and greatest and there are some absolutely shocking new features in logos 10. i wanted to share with all uh everybody that's watching today some statistics so you know we've spoke at numerous conferences together and one of the things that i like to start with is what happens when we're in the bible so there was a massive study years ago, uh, and it was, I mean, 400,000 people participated in the study. So we're talking a substantial study. And then a lot of very smart people analyzed the data, looked through, again, what happens when we're in the Bible. Uh, and they discovered something that became kind of the highlight of the whole study. Uh, and basically, when we're in the Bible one time a week, it has negligible effect on some very big areas of our life. And I'll spell that out here in a moment. Two times a week, again, negligible effect. Three times a week, again, not much. But the profound discovery was when we're in the Bible at least four times a week. That was the number, four. And you wouldn't think that. You would think there'd be a gradual incline, right? One, two, three. No, it's kind of one, two, three flat. But at four times a week, this is what happens. Feeling lonely drops 30%. Anger issues drop 32%. Uh, bitterness in relationships, especially marriage, drops 40%. Alcoholism drops 57%. Uh, sexual sins, such as pornography, that dropped 60%. And the biggest decline was feeling distant from God, feeling spiritually stagnant. That dropped 62%. You know, I travel a lot. You know, I'm probably the frequent flyer mile king of logos. I think I'm at <laughs> two and a half million miles with United now. And, and I have very candid conversations with a lot of people all over the world. And 
I've had a many, many people tell me, Scott, I feel distant from the Lord. I give him a big hug. But the first question I'm going to ask is, what does your week look like in the scripture? And Elise, I've never had anybody tell me that and then say, oh, but I'm in my Bible all the time. I'm in my men's Bible study, my women's Bible study. No, I've never heard anybody say that. So I love the fact that there's this massive study with literally like scientists kind of analyzing the data and what they found was the they call it the power of four so later again not now you can google bible engagement power of four to get the study and it's a it's a 23 page pdf document but uh, amazing to see again the effects of being in scripture now on the positive side sharing your faith jumps 200 percent and then discipling others, your family, your coworkers, those that you do life with, that jumps 230%. So again, and I think we all know this, we need to be in the Bible consistently, but there's something about being in the scripture at least four times a week. Well, and that makes perfect sense because it's God's revelation of himself. If you feel distant from God, how do you get to know him? Well, you get to know him in his self-revelation, which is his word. And um, oh, I just, I, I love studying my Bible. I'm looking, I've got my logos open right now. And on my homepage, which I'm sure you're gonna show us kind of how all that works as well. I have Spurgeon's morning and evening devotional set up. I've got um, streams in the desert. I've got the uh, chronological Bible reading plan, which by the way, is so great because you can choose different ways to read through the Bible. You can read through it you know, in the order that the books are, or you can read it chronologically. And then it just, it just gets you, you know, you just open it up and you're right where you left off and you don't have to go back and figure out where you left off. And um, I just, I, I really, I, I'm so thankful for Logos and just that what it has added to my life and how much easier it's made studying the Bible. I used to buy, you know, these, these commentaries and I have to go and flip through the physical books to try to find, you know, a page. And then I can just have it now all open right in front of me and just look at what different people have commented on. And I just love it. So I'm very excited for what you're going to show us today. Well, let me share my screen uh, right. and tell me if you, you can see logos. Yep. There we go. All right. So, and you make a good point too, is logos is mobile. So when you purchase logos, you have legal right to load it on everything you own. So if you have, you know, I, I, I joke, I don't know where all these iPads come. My my wife, it's like, yeah. honey, where, where did all these iPads? I think once we get, she just never throws anything out. So we've got iPads probably in every room just scattered and Logos is literally loaded on everyone and it stays synchronized. Mm -hmm. So if you start reading a book on one and then you close it and go open the book on another device, it's right at the same page. Yeah. So your prayer journal synchronizes, your reading plan synchronize, but what we're looking at right now is Logos 10. Now, for some of you that have been with Logos for a while, maybe you looked at Logos years ago, there was a radical change in the way it opens. Uh, all the tools now, as you can see, are on the left, and that's where we'll go here in a moment. For 30 plus years, everything used to be menus at the top, but we kind of moved everything over to the left. But what we're looking at right now is what we call the homepage. So when you load open logos, this is the way it opens. Now the top part is the dashboard. This is your personal life. So there you can see my reading plan. Now all my children is not the soap opera. Uh, I have nine children, so it's just easier for me to say all my children and I know who I'm praying for. Uh, my daughter, as you know, Autumn is a pro-life warrior. She speaks all throughout the world, uh, works for an organization called Students for Life. So obviously I'm praying for her, but this is my prayer journal in alphabetical order. Uh, I have a, a daily devotional uh, with C.S. Lewis every day, but you have Spurgeon. You can literally pick just about any devotional you want. Um, I have a reading plan that I set for my Bible, and you can see that Scott today was a good boy, and it says, hey, Scott, good job. You, you're, you're there. You already read your, your passage. But I want to show you something that maybe you didn't even know existed in Logos concerning reading plans. Because when you talked about them, you talked about a Bible reading plan, and that's essential and most important. But in Logos, you can actually create a reading plan for 
any book in your library. So watch this. Wow. I'm going to go over here to library and I'm going to type in one of my favorite authors there, Elisa Childers. <laughs> so I typed Elisa and there's your book, Live Your Truth and Other Lies. And I'm going to right click on the book and look at the option to start a reading plan. So it loads up the reading plan and you say, okay, I'd like to read, let's say every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So you can be that specific when it's finally the way you want, you click start and voila, I just created a reading plan for your book. Now what's great is I'm going to close out the reading plan that I created and notice it's now in my face every day on my dashboard to kind of encourage me. Now, if you get behind, there'll be a big red button there that says, Scott, you're behind, okay? So I love the reminder that I'm behind in some of my reading plans, but you can create a reading plan, not just for your Bible, but for any book. You know, there's always like some big systematic theology that I wanna tackle oh, yeah. every year. You know, they're usually like the size of a phone book, but with Logos, you just find it, right click, create a reading plan, you're off and that running, is right? So and it, cool. I didn't. Yeah, know and, I, and again, that. that's so cool. So here's the other thing: is this is already on my phone. I don't have to do this now on Logos on my iPhone. It's already there. So you do one thing on one device; it tells all your other devices. It's just so easy. Now, the bottom part I want to point out is what we call the explore section. And so what we're doing in this section, Elisa, is every day just pulling different articles from your library, from antiquity, from theological resources. Uh, we actually manage some amazing blogs. So here's a great uh, blog on, you know, a free chronological Bible reading plan. You talked about that. So if, uh, if viewers want to know, hey, I want to start something like that, right there. You just click that, goes to a blog, and then explains how that works. So. That's the homepage, but the power of Logos is over here on the left. And your best friend, uh, anybody's best friend now in Logos is called the fact book. And we're gonna go there here in a moment. You know, I, I wanna apologize for anybody that maybe got Logos years ago or looked at it years ago. Uh, it was user hateful, okay? Logos finally is user friendly and a lot of the reason for that is because of that one feature called Factbook, okay? But before we go to Factbook, I want to show everybody the most talked about new feature in Logos 10. So when I speak at a conference, this is a feature I have to show at every conference because the reaction is I've, I've even had dancing in the aisles. I hear some amens. I mean, <laughs> it's amazing what's, what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna real quickly show you by clicking search. Now, Logos is basically a theological search engine, but here's the difference. You know, one of the things, Elisa, that concerns me greatly in the church, and I've been doing this for 26 years, is the church is now going to Google for its theology. Now, mm. listen. Yeah. Google's a great place for travel. You know, one of the advantages of nine kids was a couple Father's Day ago. They all pulled in their money and got me a smoker. So I want to know how to do ribs and brisket. And so, yes, I go on to Google to find out how to do that. But listen, it's not the place to go to type the word marriage. You know, I did a 10 year tour with Josh McDowell. Josh would have me get on stage in Logos in front of a couple thousand families at these conferences and type the word sex and logos to prove a point that this is where you go for that word because we're gonna relate it to the Bible, uh, covenant, marriage, and so on and so forth. That is a word you never ever wanna type at Google, right? Yeah, um, but even if, we typed point, in, yeah. even if we type marriage right now, the nonsense that we would have to weed through uh, is, is unbelievable. As a matter of fact, Lisa, don't do it now, but Type the word tabernacle when we finish today. The number five hit at Google right now is a nightclub in Atlanta called the Tabernacle. Not very helpful for your Bible study, okay? Oh, yeah. So Logos is the safe place. So, but I wanna show you a feature in search, and there's all kinds of searching. There's Bible specific. So if you're looking for a particular Bible verse, if you wanna look for everything in Logos, but I selected what we call books. And I'm going to hold up to the screen here, Elisa, one of the definitive books about the Bible. 
Uh, a dear friend of mine, you know, we lost Dr. Geisler uh, in 2019. I spent many years with Norm traveling the country. Uh, I was kind of his chauffeur for a couple of years, which was an honor. Uh, but this is a definitive book about the Bible called The General Introduction of the Bible. And this thing's 700 plus pages. Now, I only own this in paper, okay? Um, great resource, but what's the problem with paper? The problem with paper is where is it, right? Um, you know, and I've spent a fortune in books. I, I bet you if I uh, got a little tour of your home, there would probably be bookcases everywhere. Wise investment, but There's what's a few, the- yeah, a few. Just a few, <laughs> just a few. What's the problem with paper though? Again, where is it? I'm, I'm doing a study. I remember somewhere in these books was this, you know, so watch what you can do in Logos 10. And again, this is shocking what I'm about to do. I'm going to load, I'm going to launch the new Logos app on my mobile device. And there's a new feature, Lisa, called the Print Library ISBN Scanner. Now, the ISBN is that little barcode that's sitting on the back of all of your theological books that you own. I'm going to point my camera now at the barcode and elisa just said on my iphone said added a general introduction to your logos this book now what do you mean it uh, that doesn't make any sense so what i'm going to do now elisa again i'm on i'm in search i'm on books i know this book deals a lot with inerrancy some of the best material on inerrancy yes. is in this book yes. so i'm going to go in here elisa and i'm going to type in the word inerrancy i'm going to hit enter and there's two sections. Downloaded books is your Logos. And we're gonna explain, we'll conclude today with talking about the different libraries. So Logos is a curated library of solid materials, commentaries and Bible dictionaries and Bible translations, right? It's a massive library. So it's a curated library, that's your downloaded books. But this is the new feature print library. It's the book I just scanned. Let me open this up and you'll notice, Elisa, there is a general introduction of the Bible, but with the page number. So it's showing me where the word inerrancy shows up in this paper book, but what's super valuable is it's telling me what page number to go to to find wow. the word I'm searching. So let me go ahead and flip to page, what did it say there? Page 181. And there is the word inerrancy all over the printed page. So listen, anybody watching that has spent a small little fortune over the last 10, 20, you know, how many years you've been doing Bible study, you just recuperated that, you just got that, that value back because we now tell you where to go to find the material. Now, disclaimer. It does have to be a theological book. So I can't, I can't scan my barbecue books. That's not going to be very helpful anyways for my Bible <laughs> study, but it has to be a theological book available at logos.com. So we have a lot of your books available. So if I own that in paper, I can scan it, search it, tell me what page number. Um, absolutely amazing new feature in logos you also have to be at the gold level and again i'll talk about the different packages when we conclude but one of the most amazing new i don't even know how this works how did our developers think of this how did they make it work but i've done this to probably 200 of my paper books and i think there's been three that we didn't have yet in logos so amazing new feature wow. in logos that's it. Well, let's That's go to really incredible, Scott, because like I'm thinking about um, I remember investing in the Craig Keener Axe commentaries a few years ago. Or I think I mm -hmm. my husband bought them for me for my birthday. So I, I need to do that. I need to I, I can scan those in. Right. And those will scan just, those in, search wow. them instantly, know exactly when. Because, again, I always remember some big things in a book like, oh, but I oh, I have to just flip, flip, flip through pages trying to find a where was this. Right. You know, well, that's idea why I, that's why I really like reading books digitally because of research. You can highlight and you can, right. you know, keep your place and you can like you can search words like you just said. So that's really, really cool to know that all the books that everybody but he's not all of them, but the theological ones, the ones that are in Logos, if if they scan their physical books, they will show up there as if they just bought it right off the website. I love that. And again, you don't have to own it in Logos. A lot of people go, oh, I have to buy it at Logos. That, no, no, no. You, I only own these books in paper, scan the barcode Logos will at least tell you what page in, what, in the book you're looking for. But drum roll, 
fact book. That's what Scott said is hands down the best feature in Logos. Uh, and, and why? For one, I think it should replace the internet. It should replace the tendency of most to go to the internet. They type in a theological idea or type in a passage. And again, you know, somebody told me it's spiritual gambling. I was like, I like that. I'm, I think it was actually Sean McDowell that said that, that that's what's happening when we go to Google with theology is again, when the hits come, who is this person telling us? Do they love the Lord? Do they love God's word? You don't know, right? So in Logos, again, being a curated library of resources, the content we're bringing you is, is solid, right? Now, what can you type in Factbook? Just about anything. Type today's date to find out what happened in church history. You can type in a topic, a person, David, Esther, Martin Lloyd-Jones, Billy Graham. I mean, it can be a person in the Bible, a person of significance in church history. You type in a Greek word, a Hebrew word, a passage. So again, whatever you're, the viewers, you would probably maybe go to Google. Don't do that anymore because you've got Factbook. So I'm actually doing a little study at the beginning of the year on, on the attributes of God. Okay. Uh, and so this is a great feature of Factbook, Elisa, is that I'm not that great of a speller. So I can go in here and type in Omni and Logo says, Scott, did you want to study God's omnipotence, God's omniscience, uh, you know, uh, God's omnipresence. So you pick what you're looking for. Uh, but I want to jump into scripture. So again, you can type a topic. You can type in inerrancy. You could type in, uh, look what happens when I type in Trinity. Now, when I said that, the viewers today had an idea, the Trinity, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. But look what the fact book did. It said you can look at the concept of the Trinity or how about do a study on the Trinity and Scripture? How about the unity of the Trinity? How about the Trinity in the New Testament, Trinity in the Old Testament? How about the historical development of the doctrine of the Trinity? So if I wanted to see kind of how the doctrine of the Trinity throughout church history is, I mean, this is amazing that Logos just did all this homework for me just by typing in Trinity and I get to see the nuance, right? But I'm going to go in and type in a passage. Uh, let's go ahead and type in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter three. Now notice as well that you can abbreviate, okay? So you don't have to type Ecclesiastes, you can type E-C- for Revelation RE, right? Praise the Lord, because again, not that great of a speller. I would probably study Job a lot. I don't know if I would, you know, some of the other books that the, the spelling might be a little bit more difficult, but look what happens again when I typed EPH Ephesians 3. Now notice all the little symbols that are showing up in Factbook. So I tell people, type something in Factbook and wait about a second, okay? Because what Factbook is doing is thinking through all that you can study from that particular passage. Now, notice the red ribbon. The red ribbon represents the text itself. So this is my decision to do Bible study. So I want to study the biblical text. But notice, I can also study some theology in the text. God is Father, union with Christ, God's love. Right. So again, when you type something in fact book, wait a couple seconds and you're you're deciding you want to study the text or do you want to study a topic? Now, I also encourage people. I just did a, a, a live stream a couple days ago with a big group of precept inductive studiers, which is an amazing methodology for studying scripture. And one of the things I appreciate about the inductive method is before you jump into the text, do a little homework on why was this letter written? Who wrote this letter? What were the historical and cultural issues at the time that, again, this letter was written, right? So before you contextualize, what does this mean for me, you know, in, in my setting, again, do a little homework, find out again who wrote the letter, why was the letter written? So notice, Elisa, that I also have the epistle to the Ephesians in general. So I'm going to select that. And we do this for every book of the Bible. So Psalms, Genesis, Revelation, any book you want to study, I would do this first to get your homework done on, again, the letter itself, the gospel itself, right? So right out the gate, a dictionary kind of explaining the letter uh, to the Ephesians, the outline of the letter. If I scroll down even further, we've got some media. I'll show you that in a moment. 
the the big verses, if you will, in Ephesians, events that happen in Ephesians, but this is the best part. It's called the Bible Book Guide. And again, for every book of the Bible, we'll do this. Look what we've done here. Here's the content of the letter, the overview, the outline, the contents. Here's the origin, authorship, date. So when you see authorship, all you have to do in Logos is click the link and it goes right to the commentary and pulls that from the commentary for this section. Again, authorship. Uh, how about background? Maybe you need to know some historical context for the particular book of the Bible that you're studying. Uh, one of my favorite sections is down here called meaning. So I want to see the theme of the particular letter, the emphasis, the message, what's the spiritual insight content and so on. What's the theology of the letter? Um, I don't know about you, but I, I tried to do this on my own before Logos created this tool. And it took so long to do what Logos has done in one second. Uh, oh, yeah. And Logos did, a, Logos did a better job. Again, I don't have to go out to Google. I've got all the content right here in Logos. And, and I want to say something. You know, it probably will be a question when we conclude today, Lisa, is, is AI. AI is scaring hmm. a lot of people right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, is your preacher pastor using AI to build the message? A lot of people are wondering, now, where did this, where did this message come from, right? So the beauty of Logos is this is trusted content. This isn't a robot. This is scholarship. This is, you know, real scholars that love the scripture that have spent their lives some of them studying the scripture you talked about craig keener love dr keener love his commentaries right that's not ai that's someone that loves jesus loves his word and has dedicated his life to writing to help us study the bible right so we are going to use ai in the future but it'll be internal meaning we're going to use AI with trusted theological resources. We're going to summarize. I mean, I've already seen kind of where we're going and it's absolutely amazing. Um, but again, it's true scholarship. Um, so I think it's a great discussion that the church is having. And, and it is a little scary to consider that stuff's getting spit out by a robot uh, that is, you know, informing you about scripture. I, I don't know about that, right? I, I want to I go to somebody like Dr. Craig Keener and, and Dr. Geisler and so on and so forth. So anyway, great feature in fact book for any book of the Bible. So you could type in Romans, 1 Corinthians, but let's go ahead back to Ephesians 3. And I want to focus on the mystery of Christ revealed. So in Ephesians 3, there's four major themes or pericopes, dependence on God, mystery of Christ revealed, a prayer for spiritual strength, and Paul given the grace to preach the gospel. But I want to focus on the mystery of Christ revealed, which is kind of focused on Ephesians 3, 1 through 7. So here we go. Now, right out the gate, we bring you commentary. Okay, one of the best things you can invest in are commentaries. They're not cheap. Some of them are 60 volumes, 50. I mean, they're massive work, sometimes take up a whole bookshelf. So Logos is loaded with commentaries. Now, the Lexum Context Commentary is award-winning, and it's our in-house publisher. So if you've not, viewers right now are like, Lexum, I've heard of, you know, all the Lifeway and Thomas Nelson and others, Lexum is our in-house publisher. Um, and again, award-winning. I mean, like we're taking trophies home now for book of the year, commentary of the year, dictionary of the year. So in fact book for a passage, we'll bring you commentary and we're just gonna give you a preview. So it's just a couple paragraphs, but notice the read more button. So if you wanna read more, click it and the whole commentary opens on the screen. So again, fact book is just a little preview, quick answer, if you will. The reason why you go to Google, I just need a quick answer, right? I'm having a discussion with somebody. What does this mean? Right? But if you want to read more, if you got a little extra time, you'll see the read more button. Now, let me show you a couple amazing features. And I know for you as a, as an author, this has got to be in Elisa's top five best things Logos does. I'm going to highlight something that I want to bring over to something I'm writing. Uh, maybe you are writing a book, maybe you're leading a women's group, maybe you're blogging. So you found something in Logos and you're like, I need to copy and paste this. So 
highlight anything in Logos. When you do, this box automatically appears. So we've got all your highlighter pens. Some of you watching, you love to highlight. So you can do that all day long in Logos. I'm simply gonna hit copy. I'm gonna go to a word processor that I've got waiting for me and I'm gonna hit paste. Now, that's not the big ooh, ah, uh, life-changing feature of Logos, this is. I'm gonna go to the bottom of the page and Logos automatically cites the reference. Now I know Elisa, that when you turn in a manuscript, you, you have to have your cited. You have to have and your cited. And you can sources. customize them too, can't you? Based on the different yes. styles, you can pick any citation style. I think we've got thirty, like APA, MLA, Tarabi. Like if you're in Bible college or seminary, typically you're, they're going to your professor is going to want uh, SBL or Tarabian. We got that. Uh, MLA's in there, Chicago's, I mean, literally every style is in there. Now, some of you watching might be going, well, I'm not Elisa Childers, I'm not writing books. It's very practical because how many of you watching have ever taken something from a paper book, didn't write down where you got it, and now you're like, oh, I've got 10 books open on the table. I don't remember where I got that, right? So automatic citation. Now, Lisa, this is a new feature to Logos 10. Let me scroll down a little bit. Let me pick a different paragraph. Uh, but instead of hitting copy this time, Elisa, this is the new feature that I honestly think is the best new feature in 10 for the global church. It's this button right here called Translate. So I've highlighted something in Logos, and I'm going to click this little button. And Elisa, what Logos is doing is translating what I highlighted into 111 different languages. Wow. Everything from Afrikaans all the way down to Zulu. That's pretty so cool. I don't speak Spanish, but I can highlight something in English, click Spanish. I just translated this into Spanish. Uh, I have a dear friend that's doing ministry in Japan right now. Literally got teary-eyed, Elisa, when this feature came to Logos because... He's in Japan, and as you know, less than 1% of the country is Christian. It's very hard for him to find material to preach from, but he has logos. He's in Japan. He can highlight anything, translate it instantly into Japanese, and then cut and paste it into whatever he's teaching. So huge new feature in Logos 10, the ability to translate. Now, media. We live in a visual culture. Um, so, you know, one of the things that you know, I've seen you teach at numerous conferences and we got to put stuff up, up on the big screen now, right? It's almost imperative that you show up with some slides because we learn with our eyeballs. So Logos right out the gate for every book of the Bible by clicking that button is going to produce uh, a whole slide deck for you to teach every book of the Bible. Timeline, outline of the letter. I love the fact, you know, you might you know this, but some of our viewers might know that I love Ephesians because it's kind of split. That first half of the, the letter is orthodoxy or God's work of rec reconciliation in Christ. And then it's orthopraxy. How do we live that out in response to God's work in our life? So it's just one of these few letters that can really be summarized kind of into these two points, orthodoxy and then again, orthopraxy. Uh, but again, for some of you that love to teach, I love to teach. You know what I'm not good at and I don't like doing is creating slides. So Logos just automatically creates your slides. Um, scroll down. I've got some uh, sermon archives if you've included those. But this is the best part of Factbook. It's called Dig Deeper. What I want everybody watching to imagine is Factbook, the top part. And again, this is on your phone. So Factbook is everywhere you load logos. So imagine having this power in your pocket with you at all times, right? So the top part's quick answer, but the bottom part is if you have a little extra time, we want you to dig deeper. And there's three sections, layouts, guides, and workflows. Now layouts are simply gonna lay out on the screen the books you need to accomplish journaling. So maybe you just want some help with your Bible journaling. Maybe you want to study a passage. Maybe you just want a Bible and a commentary. So you'd click that and that's all that would happen. Now guides, I think, are the bread and butter of logos. This is the most powerful thing we do are these guides. And for a passage, there's three primary guides, passage, sermon starter, and exegetical guide. Now I want to apologize for the word sermon. Some of you will see that and go, well, I'm not a preacher and never click it. Do you teach? Do you lead a Bible study? Oh, you need to know about Sermon Starter Guide. So anybody in a, 
teaching capacity will find great value in the Sermon Starter Guide. But let me click real quick on Passage Guide. I want to study the passage in, in more detail, more depth. What's happening on the screen right now, Lisa, and Logos is done, okay, was about 100 hours worth of Bible study. Now, when I said that, that should be shocking and people should say, now what, That's, what do you mean, Scott, 100 hours? I have about 8,000 books, Elisa, in my Logos, and, and Logos in about two seconds read all 8,000 books to find everything to help me study Ephesians 3, 1 through 7. I actually think 100 hours is conservative. Uh, I mean, 8,000 books would fill my house. How long would it take me to flip through every page of 8,000 books to find all that I could on Ephesians 3, 1 through 7, right? It's a, it's impossible, right? So Logos is already done. So let me just put this out there. For those of you watching, you want to do more Bible study. The number one excuse, though, that we give the Lord for not being in the Bible more is I don't have enough. It's always a time issue. Always a time issue. And I understand busy. I travel, got nine kids. I got a little petting zoo farm here at the house. I mean, I'm a busy guy. <laughs> but 15 minutes a day in Logos is actually an amazing amount of Bible study. 15 minutes in paper doesn't get you that far. 15 minutes on Google trying to just scour through nonsense doesn't get you that far. But 15 minutes in Logos is actually an amazing amount of Bible study. So let me just show you real quickly all that Logos brought back. Again, all I did was click right here, Passage Guide. Now for a topic, we'll go Topic Guide because topically you'd go to Systematic Theologies and Bible Dictionary. So it's a little difference between studying a topic or the text. But for the text of Ephesians 3, 1, 7, look at all that Logos brought back in about a second. There's all my commentaries, right? I just clicked the link. There's Tyndale. Uh, so literally, you click the link and it just opens on the screen, right? So there's that. There's Langs. There's UBS, Holman, and so on. So it's that quick, right? There's all my parallel passages, you know, trying to line up your what you're studying with all the other passages that relate. Um, cross-references. You know, it's very important that you look up the cross-references. The best commentary we own is the Bible because Scripture is interprets scripture. So here are the kind of the big ones, but starting in Genesis 12, 7 in chronological order, there's all the cross references down to Revelation 18, 20. So again, just float your cursor. It appears on the screen. Anybody watching wants to do Greek word studies? If we were in the Old Testament, there'd be Hebrew here, but Greek and Hebrew word studies built into your study with logos. So what we're looking at is the top 10 most talked about by scholars like Keener and others. This is the top 10 list from scholars on words you really need to know about in what you're studying. Now, if you want more, click more. We'll bring in 10 more. But this is the top 10 list of the really important Greek words in the text. So mystery and grace and prisoner and servant. So if I want to do a little deep dive on the word grace, Elisa, all I do is click the Greek word. And what Logos just did on the screen would make a seminarian mad right? What it just did in seconds <laughs> is, is unbelievable. We even go to the Septuagint, but here's all of your Greek dictionary articles. So if I don't really know what that word means, I'm learning what the, the noun conveys. And I mean, this is really in-depth Bible study. I do want to point out as well, Lisa, that there's a little speaker icon next to every Greek word. Click it. And I just heard a little voice in my ear say charis, so it just pronounced the Greek word for me because the worst thing ever is for someone watching leading a Bible study and then you get in front of your Bible study and say the word love here and then you say a gape, right? No, 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 it's agape. It's like the one Greek word we know, but Logos will pronounce the Greek word for you or the Hebrew word if we're in the Old Testament. So look at the level and depth of study that Logos brings to the table for every passage you study. Thematic outlines, here's your Bible studies, here's your cultural issues defined, here's worship, we'll find songs that relate. Systematic theologies, those big thick books that we all buy that are thousands of pages and kind of collect dust, we're going to bring those to the table. But look at all that Logos found, and I'm still scrolling, and I'm still scrolling, and I'm still scrolling. I'm making a point. The point I'm making is Logos did 
all of the study for Ephesians 3, 1 through 7 by simply starting in fact book, and then I simply click the passage guide. I mean, it's amazing the depth and, and of study that Logo Springs in seconds, right? So saving you an amazing amount of time. So good. But what I want to... What I want to segue to real quick in our closing few minutes is everything we've done so far, I geek out over. Like I, you can't give me enough commentaries and big, thick theology books and things like that. However, again, we live in a visual culture, right? I think it is important today to visualize our studies, especially for young people. So if there's any moms and dads watching, one of the reasons why Josh McDowell had me on this tour with him. It was actually Sean and Josh, and it was myself and my son. So it was kind of father, son, father, son. It was called Heroic Truth. And it was basically an apologetics 101 event for families. Josh couldn't wait till I got to this point in my lecture because of all the kids in the room. Because up to this point, Elisa, you were paying attention, but the kids' commentaries, like, ah, you know, what, whatever, right? But when I started doing what I'm going to do right now, you could hear a pin drop in the room. Why? Because I was engaging eyeballs. Okay. So there's an amazing feature in Logos called interactives. So where is this? You simply go to tools and you scroll all the way to the bottom. And there it is called interactive media. And there are hundreds of these. Okay. So I, I only have time to show you a few. So I'm kind of going to load up some of my favorites, but this is the way that we visualize your studies as well. So Logos isn't just a massive curated library. We're also going to bring in some amazing visualizations for your studies. So the first one I wanted to show is called the Psalms Explore. Okay. So the Psalms Explore, there they are, all 150 Psalms lined up. You can pick your translation you want. And let me click Psalm 4 to prove to you and look at the level of detail. There is Psalms that we read in our paper print Bibles. But in Logos, I can drop the Hebrew next to it, look at the parallelisms running through the Psalm, even look at the structure of the Psalm. Very important, actually especially since a lot of the Hebrew writers use literary devices that really highlight some amazing themes in the Psalms, which you can see by clicking that button. But I want to go back to all of them in order, and I want you to notice in the right-hand side of the screen, I've got some words here, filters. So one click, we're now looking at the five books of the Psalms. Now notice Psalm 119 is a bigger dot than all the other dots. So what is that telling us? You're right. It's the biggest Psalms in, it's the biggest Psalm singular in the Psalms plural, right? So size of dot actually is telling us something. Now, author, who wrote what? What did David write? What's anonymous? What did Solomon write? What did Moses write, right? So I get to see the authorship of the Psalm. Now structure, I wish we had another hour, Elisa, because this is one of my favorite ways to look at the books of the Bible is, is literary devices, especially if it has a chiastic structure, amazing literary device used by some Hebrew writers. But genre, look at this. Instantly, we see that most of the Psalms deal with lament. And why, I don't know about you, Elisa, but when I'm going through some grief or some sorrow or some pain, that's my book. I run to the book of Psalms because yeah. so many of them deal with, again, lament. Now, I did a live stream last year, Lisa, with our dear friend, Sean McDowell, and I, I was getting ready to just show another interactive. And Sean said, Scott, stop for a moment. This is really telling us something about worship on Sunday. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, Psalms is our worship book. Like if there was one book in the Bible that you would consider the worship book of the Bible. It is Psalms, right? And notice the emphasis of lament and grief and sorrow and pain. And yet the typical worship service on Sunday doesn't address that, right? It's primarily 99.9999% praise, right? Which is important. Yeah. It's important yeah. in Psalms. But the question Sean asks is why are we ignoring that now on Sunday. And I was like, wow, that's convicting. You're right. You know, one of the reasons I love Psalms, at least, is the honesty of Psalms. Life is tough. Life is yeah. tough, but he's still in control. 
He's still the king, but life is tough. Psalms does not sweep that under the carpet, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's almost like we want to sweep that under the carpet. I actually think that was a, you know, one of the responses of the church during COVID that I that at least from my church was weeping with those who weep, mourning with you know, suffering along those that are suffering, right? Psalms, it's just evident the importance of that in this book, right? By seeing that. Now I do this all the time, Elisa, uh, for my own personal devotions. I just line them all up and I want all of our viewers to see that all those little words and things are over on the left as well. So watch what I'm going to do with three clicks. I want to find all the prayers. So let me click prayer. There's 70 prayers in Psalms. I want to find all the prayers. There they are. I want to find all the prayers that deal with grief. Maybe I have a friend that is going through a hardship, lost a loved one. So I'm going to find the prayers in the book of Psalms that deal with grief. There's 34. Now I know better than to leave my friend in that kind of pit of despair. God is still faithful, even in the midst of pain and suffering and struggle. So look what I did, Elisa, with three clicks. I found all the prayers that deal with grief, yet still focus on the faithfulness of God. There's 17. I actually did this not too long ago. And I found Psalm 31 for a friend of mine. It was exactly what he needed, right? Um, so I love the fact, again, that with a couple clicks, I can find exactly what maybe my heart needs, maybe a friend needs. You know, I'm a parent. Uh, we actually have this, at least for uh, the Proverbs. You know, I, I did this the other day with my son. I heard him a little get a little mouthy with his mom and a couple little clicks. What does the Bible say about a foolish man in his mouth? And we had a little sit down, right? But how cool is that to use the scripture in a parenting context with a couple little clicks to find exactly what I needed to talk to my son about, right? That's great. So that's the Psalms Explorer. But here's another great interactive called the Before and After. I'm sorry, Bible Books Explorer. We're showing you how the Old and New Testament talk to each other. So if I float here on Romans, what, we're, what you're seeing real quickly is that Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, then Deuteronomy, then 1 Kings, those are the Old Testament books cited in Romans. If I come over here to Psalms, now what we're telling you for an Old Testament book is this book, Psalms, is cited in these New Testament books and letters, right? So it's unbelievable to see how all the books of the Bible talk to each other, but it gets even better. You click on any book that you're looking at. So I'm going to click now on Psalms. This is the proof in the pudding. This is where Psalms is cited in the New Testament. And the one we're most familiar with is Matthew 4, 6, The Temptation of Jesus, where Satan says to him, Christ, if you're the Son of God, throw yourself down. And then Satan cites Psalm 91, 11. He will command his angels concerning you. So this isn't just something great to look at and see how, but you click on any book and we show you where the books actually interact, right? Here's before and after. We'll take you to the Holy Land and, and not just the Holy Land. We'll take you to the Middle East and to Greece and to Israel. And I mean, we got a bunch of these, so you're going to have a, a fun time. And, and let me just say this. If you get Logos, you're going to lose sleep, okay? I promise you, it's going to be two, three o'clock in the morning here pretty soon and you're still in logos you're still studying you're still you know randy elkhorn calls it sp uh, chasing spiritual rabbits in logos he said scott there are chapters <laughs> in some of my books that are only there because of logos because wow. logos said did you know you should look at this and this relates to this and before i knew it he's like wow this absolutely relates but my brain never went there right? So chase spiritual rabbits and logos all day long. Uh, but I'm going to click here on Jerusalem to show you what you can do with this interactive. Everything on the left, at least goes to fact book. So if you don't know what a Jebusite is, who is Herod, where's Judea. So again, fact book is the centerpiece of logos, the best feature in all of logos. But look what we did with the, the picture we're looking at. This is a satellite image right now of Jerusalem. But if you take this bar here, scroll it across the screen, we show you what it looked like at the time of Christ. So this is now, this is then, okay? Now, for you apologists out there, this is our friend, Dr. Jeremiah Johnson, one of his favorite pe uh, features in Logos called Ancient Inscriptions. We'll take you on a tour of key archeological discovers 
throughout the Middle East and Israel. So this is a, the Tel, Tel Dan Staley is an ingro, uh, engraved stone that has the words House of David written on it, right? If I want to go find out about this one, if I want to go, so we're, we're taking you on a tour of all these amazing archaeological discoveries uh, that confirm scripture, right? So I just showed four of hundreds of these in logos. So again, I apologize to the sleepy loop. Now, in closing, I just want to point out that in logos, for 30 years, we've been about the Bible, Bible study, theological study, digging deep into the scripture. But we recently added counseling to Logos as well. We took over 500 counseling topics and built the biblical response to this topic. So if I go in here, Elise, and type, Elise and type in addiction, uh, I want everybody to see that we've got sexual addiction, body image addiction, social media addiction, video game addiction, serious addiction right now with teenagers. You know, if I come in here and type in anxiety, right, we've got separation anxiety or anxiety in general. So pick the one you want information for, and we relate it to other things. Here's your key Bible verses. Here's your uh, counseling keys. But the best thing is right here where we're going to provide kind of a snapshot, defined terms. Uh, we're going to give an assessment interview. So these are the questions that you ask someone struggling with anxiety. Um, I did another live stream not too long ago with uh, Sean McDowell where we talked about send, uh, gender dysphoria, gender identity. Sean was blown away at the biblical response that was in here and yet these these questions right there's a lot of things today Elise I wouldn't know how to navigate I, I wouldn't know how to talk about it I want to be biblical I want to be truthful again not sure how I would navigate this so that's what we've done in the logos counseling guide is took 500 counseling topics and built them into logos and again, this is available on your mobile device as well. It's just, it's amazing. Now, here is, drum roll, the mistake we made uh, <laughs> that we decided to honor because I'd already told you we, we were. And then I found out, oh, we can't do that. It's like, no, no, we're doing it because I already told Elisa we're doing it. Um, the discount normally is about 10 to 15% for logos. I think the last time we did this, I think it was 10 or 15%. So 30% off for a week. I'm going to give you the cutoff deadline. I'm going to give you the website you need to go to, but this is double the normal discount on logos um, and monthly. So I'll explain the monthly here in a moment. So anybody watching that just wants to do better Bible study in general, right? Just general Bible study. Um, this is 150 books, meaning Bibles, commentaries, Bible dictionaries, um, 8,000 is the value, meaning if you went to Amazon or wherever you buy paper books, you'd be spending about $8,000 for this library. That's the normal price, the price it should be. Uh, the discount for the live stream drops it to 440. Even better though, we have a monthly option, meaning when I take you to the website or give you the website URL, you can check a little box and just spread this out over 14 months. Okay, so we're trying to help it Help it in the budget, right? Uh, after 14 months, you're done. What I don't want anyone hearing is there's a lot of software today that is subscription forever, right? Netflix, who all those subscription things that the month you don't pay, you don't have it anymore. That's not what this is. It's just a way for you to budget out logos over 14 months for bronze. Now I'm going to push a little bit. I, if you're going to start seriously consider silver because I want everyone watching to do Greek and Hebrew word studies. The Bible study really starts when you start digging into the original languages. So this adds that the counseling guide starts here as well. And then also that translating feature. So that feature taking anything translating in 111 languages, 280. So almost the double library of bronze, 13,000 paper value. That's the normal price. The special live stream price is $6.99, and then the monthly is $56 for 16 months. So we extend it out a little more. However, our number one seller is gold. I think this is the library you started with, Elisa, but you've added a ton of other books. But That's ministry right. in a very broad context. You're a writer. 
uh, you're homeschooling, you are, you know, we homeschool. So this is the library my wife uses, uh, you know, you're, you are leading Sunday school or you're teaching a women's group, men's group. So ministry in a very broad context, and it has every feature of Logos 10. So there's no features missing at the gold level. So this includes that book scanner. So getting your phone out and scanning the barcode and searching it, that shows up at the gold level. It's a $19,000 library. If you were to buy all these books in paper, that's the normal price and the special, and that's wrong. So let me go over here because that was supposed to be the price I was supposed to offer. Look at the discount now. It goes down to uh, 1087 Now, here's the, the special thing I did this last time with you. I think it was last February, March. I want to keep that price down at around $50 a month. So I have special privilege. Uh, with Logos to extend gold for 24 months. So if you go to the website, you're going to see it $79 a month. And some of you are like, hey, I'm fine with that. But if it works out in the budget better at around the $50 mark, I'm going to give you details and uh, you can have this for 50, 55 a month for gold. Now, lastly, want to just share with everybody that Logos works on everything. So Android, iPhone, PC, Mac, everything. We even have a web app. So if you have a, a Chrome book or something, it'll work on that. I do want to point out that Logos works, uh, uh, that you're allowed to, let, allowed to load on everything and spouses can share Logos. So you can buy one copy for your the husband and wife, kids, anybody in the family context. So in the home, you know, once my son got married, he had to get his own Logos, uh, but spouses can share Logos and we have free training. So anybody watching going, eh, I don't know, Scott, this looks interesting, but I'm going to need some hand-holding. We have amazing free training. We will teach you how to use logos, okay? And we have great customer service as well. So here's the website that everybody's got to get to by next Sunday midnight. Now, at Sunday midnight on the 21st, we pull the website down because, again, it's not supposed to be out there at 30% off, but we're going to honor this through Sunday midnight. So it's logos.com forward slash Elisa. And if you want the special gold at the discount with that $55 a month, you have to email me directly. Okay. So there's my email address for all you watching Scott at logos.com. Super easy. Scott at logos.com. And I've done six live streams in the last five days. Now, this is the only group getting that 30% off. So you have to tell me in the subject line, Alisa, you know, live stream gold, and that will remember that I, I made a mistake that I'm going to honor. Uh, but you have to say that in the subject line, or I'm not going to remember that you're getting the special discount. Okay. So if you want that special 55 a month, just email me directly, scott at logos.com. Um, if you have old logos, email me as well. I'll go find your old logos and I'm going to try to credit you a little bit more on the discount on any books you've already purchased. So you never pay for a book twice in logos. So tell me if you have old logos, I'll go find it and then I'll reply to your email with your special discount. I love to close with this quote. It's one of my favorites because I think it really summarizes why we do what we do at logos now for 31 years. As John Owen said, if the word does not dwell with power in us, it will not pass with power from us. We want you so in the word, so saturated with the word that it just overflows into your life, into your relationships, into your conversations. That was one of the challenges today. Uh, our pastor in church is being more vocal about our love for Christ. Like just if, if he's everything, then shouldn't it be a little bit more of your conversations with everybody? And I was convicted. I'm like, you're right. Yes. So we want the word overflowing because you're so in the word, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's the website. Even my email address, Elise, is at the website. So if somebody already forgot Scott's email address, don't worry about it. Just go to logos.com forward slash Elisa. But again, midnight next Sunday, we're yanking that website down. Okay. So 30% off till then. Love it. Well, Scott, thank you so much. That was incredibly helpful. And I just want to do a little plug for the mobile app. So for years, I've had Logos for years, Scott. I've had it, I don't even know how many years, but I've had it for years. But 
up until this year, I've been using the Bible app because I didn't know, I didn't even think about putting, getting the Logos app on my phone because I've just always used it on my computer. But I use the Logos app on my phone now and I don't even use the Bible app anymore because not only do I have, you know, all of the different translations that I want to look at, but I've got my notes, I've got my devotionals, I, everything that I have on my on my uh, computer. You I know, no, I'm glad. Right there. I'm glad you said that. Let me address one thing. Yeah. If you have an app that helps you get in the Word, Amen. I'm not here to say good, bad, and ugly. Yeah, sure. But I do, I do want to plant a little seed, a question that every, I think everybody needs to ask themselves with whatever app you've downloaded, is who is writing the content? Okay. A lot of apps out there are community driven, which is great. We're part of the family of Christ. You know, we, we're, we're, we're part of the body of believers. But I want to know who wrote this commentary on Romans? Mm -hmm. <laughs> who is telling me what I'm reading here in 1 Corinthians, right? And a lot of apps are community driven, meaning I don't know who this person is. Again, right. do yeah. they believe in inerrancy? Do they love Jesus? Do they? So, just yeah. be careful is all I'm going to say. <laughs> and well, and on that note, that would yeah. this would be a great time to talk about something that happened this year. So I was uh, on my my Patreon supporters in there. We have a Facebook group in there. And somebody had posted that they had found this book written by a progressive Christian on Logos. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, because I had done all these live streams telling my audience this is this stuff is vetted. This is curated. So, of course, I texted you, Scott, and I was like, Scott, you know, I mean, I was hopefully I was nicer than this, but like explain yourself. What is going on? And so what I learned and, and this is really cool because I do want to settle this for people. What we're talking about with the packages, the gold, uh, you know, the basic, all of those, the libraries that come with those are vetted. That's from, uh, you know, those are vetted. Those authors, these are classic commentaries, really great stuff. Now, if you want to purchase books above and beyond that, there are books available that, you know, lean more into the more progressive stuff, which honestly, I read tons of progressive books for research. And so, you know, I'm glad that those are available, that I can purchase those, but the, but that stuff's not going to come with your basic package. So what's coming with your basic package is vetted, it's orthodox, uh, and, and all that good stuff. So I did want to clarify that because you and I had a, you know, several text threads back and forth where I was really asking you the questions like, okay, but what about, you know, I just, I didn't want to promote something and then have my readers like, you know, oh, Rob Bell's commentary on Romans or something, you know, that's just like right. in their basic package. So that's not going to happen. But I do want to say, guys, um, if you have any questions for Scott, now's your time. Now's the time to put them in there. We'll take questions from both Facebook and YouTube with just for a few minutes. If there's anything burning that you're not clear on, put the, the word question or just a, a capital Q in the comment box and we'll try to get to your question. But I'd like to start with the first question that I have, Scott. So if somebody, let's say a year from now, somebody's catching up on the podcast and they hear this episode and they go, oh, I really want to get Logos, but gosh, that discount only lasted a week. Um, can they still get any kind of a discount year round or can they go to logos.com slash Elisa? What, what can they do? If somebody's listening like three months from now and they're like, gosh, I missed the big double discount, but what can I do? Yes, you can always arm wrestle with someone on our sales team, and I think <laughs> I think they they can authorize at least ten percent. So okay. typically, I always am able to beat anybody's discount at Logos. Uh, privilege of being there twenty six years. So like when you and I did this last, my discount was fifteen percent off. So I will always beat whatever's the current discount at Logos. So yes, just go ahead and email me Scott at Logos .com. Uh, I've got two emails this morning from something I did last November. Uh, just happened to be on YouTube, saw this live stream. Um, now, they're not going to get the special Lisa Childers live stream discount, but yes, we, we will work with anybody. We, we want you in the Word. Yeah. Obviously, we want you getting a Logos library. So yes, anybody in the future that watches this or listens to this, just email me and I'll make sure you get some type of discount. Some, that's great. Scott at Logos.com. That's great. Okay. Lisa's question is, can I use it with Bible Recap? That's a great question because I don't, I don't know how familiar you are, Scott, with Bible Recap podcast that reads, you read through the Bible chronologically and then you go on uh, her podcast and listen to her recap. Um, is there... 
I'm not sure if is Bible Recap on Logos or or I don't think Bible Recap is on Logos. You can set up so two of the live streams I did right at the beginning. I think January first and second was two large ministries that have created like their own Bible reading plan. You can completely customize writing reading plan in the Logos, like be super specific. But I don't think we have that content in Logos yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, and that'd be man, that'd be an awesome thing. If you guys ever, you know, if we can make suggestions, if put a little comment box, suggestion box, is have uh, some sort of a, a way to access the Bible recap through Logos, that would be really awesome. Um, okay, um, NutraCoach is asking, Scott may have mentioned this, but to upgrade from silver, what's the cost? Or, for, you know, to upgrade from silver to gold, what would the cost be for that? Yeah, so just, so if you don't have any Logos, so let's just say for budgeting, you're like, you know, I, I can go with silver right now, but maybe down the road, I'd want to go gold. You just pay the difference in the price. Uh, because again, what you're really purchasing in Logos is the rights to own all these books. I mean, you know, 500 books, 600 books. So if you go to the next level, you already own a substantial amount of the books. So we just say, okay, you just have to pay the difference for these books that you don't own, right? Now, if you're talking, I bought silver way back in the day, still email me i'll try to go find you in our system uh and i'm going to try to give you some kind of discount on addition to the discount that i'm offering today so again any questions just email me scott at logos.com and, and let me just say this too lisa because i've done so many live streams show brother scott here some some uh love uh some patience some kindness you know exercise you know show me the fruit of the spirit <laughs> through your uh through the email it, it's gonna take me a while i'm already feeling my phone vibrating no, Lisa, from emails so <laughs> are they blowing I, I you promise up there yeah <laughs> i will get back to you by sunday at midnight yes that's good okay so for all of you blowing up scott's phone right now with the emails he will honor your your request yes. and he will get back to you by sunday at midnight so well i guess that's all the questions we have uh that people have put in here scott anything any final words that you want to say maybe we can repeat the website and and before we yeah, close again, out lo logos.com forward slash elisa i can put it back up on the screen here uh and the other thing is anybody that emails me and and gets logos i'm going to send you a link i just finished a 12 part video series on logos um so all the major features uh you know the videos are about 15 to 20 minutes each um so i'll send you the link to that in my response to you uh, but it's a great new series just finished but i promise you you, you know my spiritual mom, I think I've told you this, Elisa, is K. Arthur. Uh, love K. And K. Arthur, uh, you know, she's 80 plus. She said, I can't give the, but 80 plus. <laughs> uh, but she's given me permission to say, if she can use Logos, anybody can mm. use Logos, right? So we will support you. We're even open on Saturdays. So we have customer service even on Saturday because yeah. we want you doing better Bible studies. So not only yeah. the tool itself, but we're going to support you as a company. And is that training available at all levels? All levels, training? absolutely. All levels free yes. training, awesome. Yeah. All right, well, Scott, thank you so much for taking the time. I really hope for everybody listening and watching that you will really consider making this investment because it it is really life-changing. It has helped me so much in my Bible study. Um, keeping me engaged, keeping me it fresh even, because um, there's just so many ways that you can discover more about the context of the scripture, the historical setting, so many things that just, if you don't know it, you don't know it. And and we're talking about a, a very ancient book that we are unfamiliar with that culture. And the more you know about that, um, the more it's gonna come alive for you. So I wanna encourage everybody to get Logos. And I love that you have a monthly pay payment plan so you don't have to pay for it all up front. But anyway, God bless you. Thank you, Scott, for, for being on with us. And if you're watching on YouTube again, if you'll subscribe and click the notification bell, we've got some great conversations coming up in the next few weeks with uh, Scott Klusendorf on pro-life apologetics, Skip Heitzik on trends in Bible study and, and his approach to Bible study. Next week is John Cooper. Um, 
which is always fun. We get into a lot of trouble together. And of course, I'll be uh, sometime in the next few weeks doing a, a episode with my co-author, Tim Barnett. Don't forget to go order, pre-order, and if you've got Logos, order it on Logos. You can pre-order The Deconstruction of Christianity, and then go over to the deconstructionofchristianity.com, put in your receipt number, and you're going to get some pre-order bonuses, a free chapter, and 60 days free access to the audiobook. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and let's remember that as we pursue Christ, let's keep a sharp mind, a soft heart, and a thick skin. We'll see you next time.